I think generally, I mean, my general sense, uh, you know, we, we didn't anticipate the full, when we under, all of us had various concerns about the financial system, about the economy. None of us anticipated the full ramifications and extent of the crisis. And so in that respect, we were late. Um, we then responded very aggressively. I think overall we were successful in stabilizing the financial system. And there was a paper given here yesterday about comparing how quickly it happened, at what cost, how quickly the economy recovered. And generally speaking, we look good compared to other advanced economies, to other countries and, that have had crises in the past. Um, I think where you know, we didn't succeed, obviously, and, 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 and uh, Tim already alluded to that, is that you know, we didn't persuade the country, generally speaking, that what we were doing was necessary, although we firmly believed it was. And so that communication issue, I think, is, is still out there. But we did respond aggressively to the crisis itself and, and did bring it under control pretty quickly. So, Tim, what do you think you missed? What, what do you think was the, the big miss in all of this, if, if we just go to the, the, the central issue of how we got here? You know, it's a, you could, it's a common thing that happens across lots of parts of economic policy, which is it's the, it's the general failure of people to appreciate the damage that might come from the remote, implausible, low-probability event. It, it, seemed, it seemed to most people living in this country that uh, the type of financial panic, a run on the banking system that was part of the Great Depression, the approximate cause of the Great Depression, was not something that could happen in modern times. And, you know, you could say that was a failure of imagination. Our, our, as, a, as a country, we were living with a financial system that had looked more stable over time. That made people believe it was going to be more stable in the future. But we ran into a dangerous moment in the world with a system that would dramatically outgrown the protections of the Great Depression without the tools to prevent panics, uh, to break panics. And that, but, you know, in a simple way, uh, it's, the, it's the failure to anticipate, act early enough to reduce the risk of the existentially damaging event that seems remote and implausible. So when you look at the numbers that you guys have all put together and your teams have put together 10 years later, is there data that you wish you had focused on more and that today you'd focus on instead? Hank, is there, is there any piece of data that, that you think? I, I don't think this is about data because my, my strong belief is that these crises are unpredictable in terms of cause or timing or the severity when they hit. And sure, there will always be someone at that time that can say, look, I called it, but that person won't get it, won't get it right the next time. And, and so, to me, the huge takeaway was that we were dealing with an epic once every 75 year financial crisis, a severe crisis. And to me, the biggest takeaway was you, we weren't able to put out the fire without getting the fiscal authorities we needed from Congress, without getting the tools we needed. And so, the, there was nothing more frustrating than because by early 2008, we, we, we knew we needed more. And to know you needed more and, 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 and can't get it is, is a tough situation to be in. And so, so to me, I knew when we got there, we knew how flawed the regulatory system was. The Treasury, we, we started working on a study looking at the limitations. But to me, it was just missing, missing the, the, the magnitude of the event. Okay, this is you, Hank Paulson, on the debate. Uh, you said, I was never able to, this is, this is what you actually said was one of the things you wished you had, could have done better. You said, I was never able to convince the American people that what we did wasn't for Wall Street, but was for them. Right. I'm going to ask all three of you about this, because this to me is the central issue um, 
If you look at where we are today and describe it as a success economically, there are still many in this country who don't believe it. And the question is from a policy perspective, both in the policy itself and in the communication of the policy, was there another way to do it? Well, I will start because you're looking at me, but, the, but, the, <laughs> but I, I would begin by saying, I think one of the issues was that we were early relative to, to, to where some other countries have, have, have stepped in to deal with these things. And so we stepped in before the banks had collapsed and we did some things to, to fix the financial system, which uh, are, are very hard to explain because they are objectionable things. I mean, a, you know, in the United States of America, you know, there's a fundamental sense of fairness that the American people have, that if you take risk and you succeed, that's great. But if you take risk, the government shouldn't be there. That, that, that you don't want to reward the arsonists. And, and so, but we were forced to do things to protect the American people, which are by definition going to be hard to defend. And then the, the, the second thing is how did we, how could we explain what we were doing was for Wall Street and not, you know, uh, that it wasn't for Wall Street and that it was for the, for, for the American people. And it, it is very, very hard to explain that, that the system was so complex, so interconnected, that we had to go to the source. And Wall Street was, was like the heart. And we had to stop, we had to go to the heart, we had to go to the source to stop the bleeding. Otherwise it was gonna kill the economy. And what we were doing is we were putting the tarp, the things we did, we did was like putting a tourniquet on it. But it's very hard to explain that finance is the lifeblood of the, the, the economy. I mean, we tried to, all of us stood up there. Ben did something on 60 Minutes, Tim talked about it all the time. I, I tried to explain that, you know, that if you want to take money out of your ATM, if you want a loan to send your kids to college, whatever, you need finance. But it's a hard case to make, and we are unable to make it. Chairman? I think the, the premise of your question is somehow that the current dissatisfaction, populism, the, the remaining obvious economic problems that there are, are all traceable back to the financial crisis. I think that's a wrong premise. Financial crisis didn't help, obviously. We know historically that financial crises do tend to precede increases in populist politics. But people have been saying that the country's been going in the wrong direction for 40 years. There's been a long period of very slow gains in real wages, increasing inequality, slow upward mobility, social mobility. We've had rising concerns about trade, China's entry to the WTO in 2002, immigration, cultural issues. So there's a whole gamut of things that are feeding into the popular mood. I think the financial crisis obviously exacerbated that, but it was not, I don't think, the primary source of the politics that we're seeing today. Now, on the communication, it was tough. I mean, none of us is experts in communication. I did go on 60 Minutes, and I spoke at military bases and at colleges and things like that. But we had some very gifted people like uh, Tim's boss, President Obama, and others who really couldn't uh, turn around that, that narrative. And I, and I think that's just very hard to do.